name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter, and the title of today's Bible study is 14 Bible Verses Christians Should Memorize. Today we're going to go into our Father's Word and we're going to look at 14 verses of Scripture that the Lord put upon my heart to use in this Bible study as Scriptures that you should memorize, that you and I as believers should memorize. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Holy Bible, as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's open with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you for another day and another opportunity to go into your word, the Holy Bible. I pray, Father, that you forgive me for my sins and forgive my audience for theirs. Wash us in the precious blood of the Lamb of God and make us clean. And fill us with the precious Holy Spirit sent down from heaven above, Father, as we go over these 14 vital scriptures that all Christians should memorize. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you, Almighty God, Jehovah. Amen. Now, we're going to get right into this thing. We're going to get right down to the nitty gritty right down to where the rubber meets the road, all right? The first verse of scripture that I feel every script, I mean, every Christian should know and memorize is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And it reads, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a work man, and it also means woman, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, the reason why this is a verse of scripture that every Christian should memorize is because it tells us that when we are studying our Father's word, we are showing ourselves approved of God. God is pleased when he looks down and see you and I meditating in his word day and night. And he says we shouldn't be ashamed of this, okay? Because the Bible is nothing but a big love letter or, or book of instruction written from our Heavenly Father to every man and woman, every boy and girl that walks underneath the sun. And it is of the utmost importance that you and I learn what God wants us to learn from his word. Because if you don't learn from his word, then you are in no position to know what he wants. You see what I'm saying? You couldn't possibly even begin to know how to be a Christian if you don't study his word to find out what he says. Okay? Um... That's why it says rightly dividing the word, okay? Because there are things that are written in the Old Testament that we no longer have to practice. This is what he means by rightly dividing the word. So every Christian should memorize this verse. Then James chapter 1 verse 22 is my second verse that I think every Christian should memorize. It says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. You see that? So the Apostle James says, but be ye doers of the word. That means practice what you learn from our Father's word and not hear us only. Don't be a person who just wants to hear something good to make you feel good, but you have no intention of taking it and putting it into practice. A lot of people go to so-called church for that reason, to get the ears tickled, to get a little spiritual entertainment. Uh-uh. The Lord is a God that says what he means and means what he says. And the Bible is a book of instructions. You know, somebody made up the acronym for the word Bible. Basic instructions before leaving earth. And that is very true. So you have to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Because if you are a person who just hears what God says and you're not living according to God's word, you're deceiving your own self. You think you have salvation, but you don't. Okay? Now, another verse that I think every Christian should know is John 3.16. That verse is Christ Jesus speaking of something that is of the utmost importance. And he says there, for God so loved the world, talking about God his Father, Jehovah, that he gave his only begotten Son, and Christ is the only begotten Son 
of Jehovah, okay? That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, you see that? But have everlasting life. This is a verse of scripture we should all memorize and share with others because it it's the gospel all summed up in one verse. God so loved the world. He loves this world so much that he did something about our fallen humanity, okay, into sin. We all were born sinners because of our foreparents, Adam and Eve, felt the test in the garden and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and became sinners and passed that sin upon their children. And so that's why we age, that's why we die, that's why we struggle with the flesh to do good. Anyway, God loved us so much that he did something about this. He gave us his only begotten son. That means he sent Jesus Christ, the one we call Jesus in the English tongue, into this world that he had a share in creating with his father for the sole purpose of dying for our sins so that you and I could be forgiven of all our sins, declared righteous, and be put in the uh, position to receive everlasting life if we accept him as our Lord and Savior and learn his word and, and allow the spirit to mold us. This verse is so very important. And then it says, uh, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, that's very important, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's all about your belief in what Christ's blood accomplishes. His blood pays off our sin debt. We were ransomed with his blood. The blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, cleanses us from all sin. And because we put our faith in that blood that he shed, at Calvary, we are declared righteous. And so that brings me to my next verse of scripture that I believe every Christian should understand and memorize. Galatians 2 verse 16 the Apostle Paul, being guided by God's Spirit, wrote there, knowing that a man, that means a woman too, is not justified. The word justified means to render innocent or declare somebody righteous. Knowing that a man or woman is not justified or declared righteous or rendered innocent by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. You see that? Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified or declared righteous by the faith of Christ. The word faith simply means your belief in someone or something. And as Christians, we're talking about our belief in the Son of God as the Savior of the world. Anyway, he says, and not by the works of the law, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. So it's vital that you and I memorize this verse of Scripture, because even though we have our Father's word, the word just gives us knowledge of the Messiah and what God wants us to do, but the word can't save us, not the written word. The living word of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, he's the only one who can save us. And by putting our faith in what he did, we are saved, okay? Very important that you understand that. Now, that doesn't mean that the law serves no purpose. The law still serves its purpose. It shows us right from wrong, and it shows us how to live holy. It also shows us that we're all sinners in need of Christ the Savior. And so this is a verse of scripture I believe every saint should memorize and put into practice. The next verse is Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. And that there, King Solomon, being guided by God's Spirit, wrote, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man. It could be a woman too. But the end thereof, or the end of that way that seems right to that man or woman, are the ways of death. Now this is of the utmost importance because we got a lot of people in this world who are totally ignorant of God and what their purpose for being here is. They think they're here just to do whatever they jolly well please. Well, the Bible clearly tells us there's a way that seemeth right unto a man or a woman but the end of that way that seems right to them are the ways of death. You see that? And that takes us back to the very first scripture. 
Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, a workwoman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's why it's so important that we study the word so we'll know what God says we're here for. You got it? And then Proverbs chapter 3, I'm going to uh, do two verses at one time this time because they go together. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. Solomon, being guided by the Spirit of the Lord, wrote, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Trust in Jehovah God with all your mind. That's what the heart is. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean unto your own understanding. Verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Very important that you don't put your trust in man or money or things or yourself. You put all your trust in God. Okay? Acknowledge him in everything you do, and he's going to guide you through this wicked world right into the kingdom of heaven. Of the utmost importance that you memorize these verses. Then Psalms 9, verse 17. This is a small, little, little verse, but it's very profound, very deep, very powerful. It says, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. This is the ultimate warning to this world of fallen mankind. The wicked shall be turned into hell. That means the lake of fire, ultimately. And all the nations that forget God, we need to know this. We need to memorize this verse, and we need to share this with people. Because there's a lot of people on their way to hell because they don't know God or they have forgotten God. They're just doing their thing. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Then 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I mean 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. This is something that we should memorize. It says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. You see that? That everyone may receive the things done in his, and if, if it's a woman, in his or her body, according to that he or she has done, whether it be good or bad. Very important that we memorize and understand this one. Because everything you do in your life, whether it's good or bad, you're going to give an account for it on Judgment Day. Oh, yes, you are. And that's a very scary thought if you're down here living in open rebellion against God. You're going to answer for all the evil you do. And it's not going to, be, it's not going to go well for you unless you do what the Lord says in the next verse. And that verse is 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. The Lord says... Through his apostle John, if we confess our sins. You see this? He, talking about God Almighty, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now the devil does not want you and I to know this verse. This is why we need to memorize this verse. If we confess our sins, he, God Almighty, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you and I accept Christ as our Lord and Savior and repent of all the evil we've done, admitting it to God, the Lord will forgive us for everything we've done wrong and he will wipe the slate clean. Let that sink in. This is a crucial verse for memorization and also to share with other people that don't know these things. Then, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Oh, this is a powerful one. This is a powerful verse here. There the apostle, being guided by the Spirit of God, wrote this. He says, there has no temptation taken you. This is Apostle Paul that God used to write this verse. He was guided by the Spirit of God. He's speaking to all of us. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, which means mankind. He says, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. God will not let the devil tempt you above something that you can handle. But will with the, tempt but will with the temptation 
also make a way to escape that ye or you may be able to bear it. Now, what this verse is saying to us is that whatever temptation comes to you, if you rely on God, you can turn away from it. That's what it's saying. God is not going to allow the devil to tempt you above something you, can, you can't handle. And with the temptation, when that test comes, he's always going to make a way out. So when you and I sin, it's because we didn't know this verse or we didn't put this into practice. You and I never have to yield to sin. Ever. That's why this verse is so important. Let me read it again. There is no temptation taking you but such as common to man. So when you're being tempted about whatever, it's nothing new under the sun. You, you don't think you're unique and that this is the most uh, tempting temptation ever put upon a man or woman. It's not. Satan doesn't have any new bag of tricks. He tempts people with all the same things. He says, but God is faithful. God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able or you are able. God ain't going to let Satan put something upon you that you can't handle through his, through his help, of course. We'll get to that in a minute. But we'll, with the temptation, also make a way to escape. He'll always make a way out that ye may be able to bear it. And that's why he makes the way out. Now, I'm going to give you an example. I don't have a problem with money or jealousy or anger anymore. Uh, lust. That's something that the devil had me in bondage to for many years. I should say that's something I allowed the devil to have me in bondage to. And he still brings it to me every morning. He hits me and throughout the day with lust, thoughts of lust and, and, and putting, uh, par parading women in front of me all the time. But because I understand this now, the Holy Spirit always gives me a way out. And I take it. And so that's what you and I are going to have to learn to do with whatever we're being tempted with. Okay? And if you don't, you're not going to be saved. Because the Lord says he's not going to let Satan tempt you above something you can't handle. So that means whatever temptations the enemy brings to you, God gives you the strength to turn away. Now this, we're almost done. We got three more to complete my 14 verses. The next one is this, because it's crucial that you understand what I just said cannot be done apart from Christ. That's why Jesus said in John 15, verse 5, he said, I am the vine. Ye, which means you, are the branches. He or she that abideth in me, and I in him or her, it always refers to the, the other sex, even though he just says the masculine. He's always talking about men and women. He or she that abides with me and I in him or her, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, Jesus said, ye, which means you, can do nothing. And this is why I failed for many years because I read this verse, but I didn't believe it or didn't understand it or didn't put it in practice. And it's a lot of Christians today who are failing because of this. You and I can't do anything without God's help. You can't do it. It's all about relying on God. Okay? And we're talking about God the Son. Jesus said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. So he says, I'm the whole plant. You're just an extension of me. He says, he or she that abides in me and I in him the same bringing forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Now, I want you to get this picture in your mind. Uh, picture an apple tree. You see the tree sticking out of the ground, and you see the branches up there and the pretty leaves, and you see all the pretty, fat, rosy, ro uh, rosy red apples hanging off the branches. If you and I go up to that apple tree, and we take a saw, and we cut off one of the branches, a branch full of pretty red apples, and it falls down on the ground and we take all the apples. We come back a couple of days because that branch is no longer connected to that tree. It's going to start to die. That's right. The leaves are going to wither and no more apples will grow on that branch. 
because it's been severed from the tree. Okay? So if you and I disconnect ourselves from Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, in the Hebrew, is his true name, we are gonna, we, we're going to start to die spiritually. We're already dying physically. And we're not going to make it in. So that's what Christ wants you to understand from this verse. And that's why it's so important that you memorize it, okay, and put it into practice. That's why Paul says in Philippians 4.13, my next verse, he says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Now notice the strengthening is an ongoing thing when you rely on him, Okay? And so it's not a one-time thing, it's an ongoing thing. Just like being a part of the vine, being a branch of the vine. The vine is the quintessential part of the whole plant. Okay, as long as the vine is alive and you're connected to it as a branch, you're going to produce fruit. So that's why Paul says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. And so can you and I. But it's not an automatic strengthening. And this is our last verse. You and I have to ask the Lord God Almighty, the Father, Jehovah, in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yeshua HaMashiach, to give us more and more of his Holy Spirit every day and help us live the life that's pleasing to him. If you're not asking, you're not receiving. And you don't have to be sinless to ask. Okay, we're never going to be sinless as long as we're in the flesh. That's why Jesus said in Luke eleven thirteen, and this is the last verse I'm sharing today. He says, if ye then, if you then, being evil, he's talking about mankind, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly father Give the Holy Spirit to them that asked him. You see that? You got to ask. And so these are my 14 Bible verses that every Christian should know, understand, and memorize and put in practice, more importantly. Okay? So, if this little Bible study has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to go to paypal.me slash Barton Porter and please give a financial gift of whatever you can afford to get. Whatever you give will be a tremendous blessing to me, all right? Now, I want to close this little Bible study with a prayer for those out there who are watching and who have been touched by the Spirit who want to give their life to the Lord, okay? So, if that be you, Pray this prayer with me. Father God, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, I ask that you forgive me for my sins, Lord. Wash me in his precious blood and make me clean. Fill me right now with your precious Holy Spirit, Lord, and start to mold and make me into the type of person that you want me to be. I accept your son, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior today, Father. Come into my heart. Thank you right now, Father, for answering my prayer. In Yeshua HaMashiach's precious name, I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, you have just taken the first step to becoming a Christian. The most important step is the first step. Now, the next thing you need to do is find a Christian. It doesn't matter who it is. Any Christian has the authority of God to baptize you and get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the next thing you need to do. Then you need to start praying every day and studying our Father's Word so He can teach you more and more and ask God to guide you to a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Bible-practicing-only church, okay? And if He does that, then you become a part of that church. Otherwise, just keep studying with me and ask God what he wants you to do. Because once he brings you in, he cleans you up, then he's going to put you to work, okay? So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. God bless you. And 
Goodbye.